Hello everyone, I am Aditya Pedretla and my talk will be about simulating the refractive radiator transfer equation. This equation models light transport in scenes such as those shown here, a burning candle, a mixed cocktail, mirages in the sea and even human tissue. What all these scenes have in common is that they contain both continuous refraction and scattering light transport effects. To see what I mean by continuous refraction, consider first a light ray as it moves from a medium of one refractive index to another. Because of refraction, the light ray will bend once at the interface between the media. As the number of interfaces increases, the number of times the light ray bends also increases. By continuous refraction, then we refer to media where refractive index changes continuously and therefore light also refracts continuously resulting in a curved path. The RRT applies to media where light not only refracts continuously but additionally gets scattered due to interactions with microscopic scattering particles. The combination of these two effects creates a challenging rendering problem which can currently only be efficiently solved using photon mapping technique. Unfortunately, the bias and slow convergence characterizing these techniques can be quite problematic for many important applications of the RRTE such as tissue imaging. As a quick example, here is our attempt to reproduce some experimental measurements using photon mapping algorithms. These measurements are captured using tissue imaging setup based on the RRTE that I'll describe in more detail later in the talk. The important thing to notice here is that the existing photon mapping techniques struggle to reproduce the measurements in a reasonable amount of time. What I will show you in this talk is how to extend the unbiased techniques such as BDPT to render RRT. These techniques allow us to much more closely reproduce our lab measurements at equal time as shown here and can also be helpful for other scientific imaging and rendering production settings. In the rest of the talk, I'll first discuss some background on the refractive radiator transfer equation and challenges in developing unbiased algorithms for it. I'll then discuss how to overcome the main such challenge, creating direct connections, and show you a few acceleration techniques that we have developed. Finally, I'll present a few experimental results. Let's first look at the um, background on the refractive radiator transfer. And let's begin with the case of a medium where there is only continuous refraction and no scattering. As I mentioned earlier, light travels along curved paths inside such a medium. Given an initial point and direction, we can trace such a curved path using Hamilton's equations. I won't go into the details, but the important point here is that we can select a suitable step size and then use symplectic integration to produce a piecewise linear approximation to the path. Let's now consider the case of a medium where there is only scattering and no continuous refraction. Then we can model light transport using the radiator transfer equation. As many of you know already, we can numerically solve this equation with Monte Carlo integration using techniques such as bidirectional path tracing. In bidirectional path tracing, we iterate over sampling paths. To trace a path, we track from the sensor and trace a random sensor subpath and then we trace a random emitter subpath. We join the vertices with a straight line to create a light path. If we have both continuous refraction and scattering, we can repeat the same steps and replace straight line ray tracing with refractive ray tracing. However, the problem is we cannot join the source and sensor subpath vertices with a straight line. We have to find a curve to make these direct connections is to avoid direct connections and use techniques such as photon mapping. In fact, that was the focus of most past work on rendering the RRT. In photon mapping, we first trace several emitter rays to create a photon map. For every sensor ray we trace, photon mapping computes the radiance by weighing the contribution of nearby photons with a distant dependent kernel. This way, photon mapping avoids direct connections. However, photon mapping causes bias, typically slower, and requires hyperparameter tuning. Instead, we propose to solve the problem by finding the curve that directly connects the source and sensor subpath exactly. We will next derive the curve for direct connections. So, we need to find a curve that passes through initial position xi and final position xf and satisfies the differential equations. 
This is known as boundary value problem in the literature. We know how to solve a similar problem, namely given initial position xi and initial velocity vi, compute the curve for any distance. This is known as the initial value problem or refractive ray tracing in the literature. We use numerical integration to solve this. As we know how to solve IVP, one way to solve DVP is to try different initial velocities and hope to find a curve that passes through XF. This is quite expensive. Instead, let us consider a point on the IVP after we do refractive ray tracing for a propagation length tau. We define error as the shortest distance between XF and IVP curve, which we can compute by minimizing over propagation length tau. Note that this error is a function of initial velocity vi. Now, we can restate PVP as a solution that minimizes this error while varying vi. Fortunately, both the error and the IVP are differentiable, and we can compute the derivative of the error with respect to vi analytically with a little overhead. We have used gradient descent to compute direct connections. For mathematical details, please refer to our paper. A few examples of computing direct connections by solving several IVP problems via gradient descent. Let us solve direct connections again, but this time with a different initialization. Notice that while most cases converge to the same final curve, the bottom right case converts to a different curve. Therefore, we can have two or more valid direct connections and the total throughput from xi to xf is the sum of throughput of all the direct connections. One way to compute the throughput is to enumerate all the solutions exhaustively and sum the throughput, which is impractical. The other approach is to estimate with an unbiased single sample Monte Carlo. For this, we randomize the initialization to the gradient descent algorithm and solve the PVP. The Monte Carlo estimate for the total throughput is the ratio of throughput of the solution to the probability of reaching that solution. To compute this probability, we need to know the set of all directions that will converge to this solution. We estimated this probability using an algorithm similar to Zeltner et al's and the details can be found in our paper. Let's look at some ways to accelerate the algorithm. In standard ray tracing, for every ray, we have to do one ray intersection test. And that intersection test will tell us how long we have to travel to get outside the medium. If we are traveling less than that distance, we will be inside the medium. In refractive ray tracing, we would have multiple such intersection tests, one for every step that I am taking. This is quite expensive. We avoid that by using sine distance function, which is the distance from any point to the medium boundary. SDF will tell us the distance to the boundary and hence the number of steps that we can safely take before reaching to the medium boundary. Therefore, we can evolve the curve for a large distance without ray tracing tests and then repeat this procedure till we reach close to the boundary, potentially avoiding several intersection tests. Of course, close to the medium boundary, we switch to standard intersection test to avoid bias. Please refer to our paper for more acceleration algorithms. Now, let us see a few experimental results. This is a simple scene inspired by Ament et al. that has an aquarium filled with sugar water. The sugar solution concentration is highest at the bottom of the aquarium and lowest at the top. And hence, the refractive index is lowest at the top of the aquarium and highest at the bottom and varies linearly with depth. A laser beam propagating through this solution refracts and continuously scatters resulting in a curved light trajectory as shown in the right. Multiple such trajectories appear due to Fresnel reflection of the beam on the aquarium's wall. Lunenburg lenses are special kind of lenses that are spherical in shape and have radially decreasing refractive index profile as shown in the right. Standard Lunenburg lenses focus a parallel beam of light to the surface of the lens. By changing the refractive index profile, we can control the power of the lens. We placed a Lunenburg lens inside a coronal box scene filled with fog and has a point emitter on the roof. I am showing the light focusing behavior and volumetric caustics for various Lunenburg lenses 
with increasing power as we go from left to right. This rendering is with a power similar to an ordinary glass sphere and can also be rendered with standard BDPT. Here are some insets. As the power of the lens increases, the caustics become more and more focused and then they start defocusing again. In the past, photon mapping was used to solve RRT. Photon mapping is a bias technique that requires hyperparameter tuning. On the left, we have BDPT and in the middle, we have photon mapping with default parameters for the same rendering time. After rigorously fine tuning the parameters for several iterations, we have obtained the result in the right, which still have some noise and blur artifacts. Here are some insights for better visualization. Note that photon mapping eventually converges. We notice that BDPT converges five times faster than photon mapping. Therefore, in addition to being unbiased and requiring no parameter fine tuning, BDPT is much faster. Our path space formulation can easily be extended to time of flight cameras. The time of travel here accounts for change in the speed of light due to ref varying refractive index. To better capture the dispersion, we rendered the travel time of 76 spectral channels and projected the hyperspectral transient rendering onto the RGB space. The spheres here are either made up of crown glass on the left or a linear combination of flint and crown glass on the right. Quite a lot of things are happening here. So let us watch a couple of frames. We can observe that the homogeneous transient travels faster than the heterogeneous transient on the right. This is because the flint glass has higher refractive index than crown glass. And hence, light travels slower in continuous refractive media than constant refractive media here. Another time slice showing rainbow wavelengths hitting the floor at different travel times. For crown glass, we can observe a faint Fresnel internal reflection from the sphere towards the roof. Lastly, I will show you some applications of our rendering algorithms in tissue imaging. Tissue has continuously varying refractive index, but it is mostly negligible and light traveling through tissue only scatters, leading to a decrease in image contrast. One way to mitigate scattering is to use an ultrasonic array, which modulates the, and amplifies the refractive index contrast turning the scattering tissue into a virtual green lens. This continuous refraction guides the scattering photons to sensor, thereby increasing light throughput and imaging contrast. This is a technique that has been pioneered by our co-authors and is quickly finding applications in tissue imaging. For a demonstration, on the left, we have an experimental setup we have built. The laser enters the scattering media surrounded by an ultrasonic array via some optics. The scattered light is then captured by the camera. We used a fluorescent target and with ultrasound off, we would see a completely diffuse image. With ultrasound on, the tissue becomes continuously refractive and the photons are threaded through the scattering medium. By changing the parameters of the ultrasonic array, we can change the refractive index profile in the medium and create various caustic patterns. So we can think of this setup as a programmable refractive index field generator and we can use our rendering algorithm to simulate measurements captured by this technique. The first image, real capture, is a caustic referred to as quadrupole wavefront shape used to illuminate four regions deep inside a scattering medium. The second figure is an image rendered with BDPT and the third one is rendered with previous photon mapping techniques for the same runtime. We can notice that the real data is close to BDPT compared to photon mapping. There are still some mismatches as we haven't calibrated the experimental refractive index field and scattering parameters. The ability to accurately and efficiently simulate measurements from this new imaging technique is important for opt optimizing its performance. In particular, this experimental setup has quite a few parameters to be tuned. We can change the ultrasound frequency, voltage, shape, placement of transducers, and more. From Hassan experience, they take several human weeks, if not months, to design these systems. Using our renderer, we can virtually evaluate the effect of these parameters and in fact, we have already run a large number of simulations through which we have found interesting properties and optimal operating points for this type of hardware. To summarize, we have focused on simulating refractive radiative transfer, which refers to light transport in media that have both continuous refraction and scattering. Such media occur both in real-world scenarios and scientific applications. 
We have shown how to enable unbiased path tracing techniques for simulating the RRTA by developing procedure for creating direct connections inside continuously refractive media. Finally, we have shown applications of our rendering algorithms in tissue imaging techniques such as virtual ultrasonic waveguides. We thank our sponsors for their support. For more details of the technique, please visit our webpage that also contains the Mitsuba source code. Thank you all so much for listening.